Guys, welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we are going to get a differential housing and we are gonna put it in the chassis. So for you guys that are not familiar with what's going on here, if this is your first episode tuning in, this is a chassis that we're building from scratch for a C1500 OBS pickup truck that my grandfather left me. Sitting over here, still all together, but we're giving it a new home. So it's gonna sit on this chassis and we're gonna do everything in our power to try to make this thing fast and handle. In the beginning of the episodes, if you weren't familiar, we started out doing all the good uh, front suspension here. We have a long arm, short arm, independent front suspension. In the back, we are building a three link setup with a pan hard bar, right as you can see there. And in this episode, we're gonna go ahead and get the housing and we're going to make all the bracketry and get this whole thing mounted up. So we're gonna have a nice articulating three link by the end of this episode. So stay tuned, we got a lot of good stuff coming up and let's get started. Okay, so we got everything cut out. We got three link, or uh, yeah, the lower three link brackets for the the uh, diff housing right here. So we got two sets, one driver side, one passenger side. They're the same though. Then over here we have the passenger side mount. This will be in here. I'll show you in a second. And uh, this is the driver side mount. That's just a coilover uh, stud where the coilover mounts. And up here, what we made. These are some stands that we're gonna use, and these are gonna be used to locate the diff under the center line and hold everything in the proper height. So when we get the three link all in place, these will be placed here, and this will give us the proper, uh, basically the ride height location of the diff. So you can see it's pretty high up in the frame there. That's because we're running a pretty decent size wheel package. We're running about 27 inch wheel, not 27 inch, 7 inch wheel, 27 inch tire uh, on a 19 inch wheel. So that's why those are about that tall. Um, let me see if I can get this mocked up and show you how these fit. Okay, so this gives you an idea of how the passenger side assembly will go. These will have a two inch spacing between it. This will be welded. The diff will go through here. The uh, front of the truck is basically pointing up in this direction. This big hole here will receive a sleeve, uh, 7 8 inch OD tubing with 5 8 ID. That's gonna be our sway bar uh, mount there. And then this will be folded over basically right there where that edge is, uh, where that kick up is. That will be bent up. And then that half moon there will be right where those go. Uh, and that'll all tie the rear together. So I'll have three welds uh, here. And here, that'll be on the diff housing, and then this will be welded on the diff housing for some extra support uh, to support this coilover stud here. So we'll get uh, started on this. I think the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna weld up the, uh, I'm gonna get some angle iron and just put it flush to the bottom edge of this. And that is going to be our stance. So let's start that next. Okay, so I'm on my lunch break. We're gonna go ahead, I'm working from home, so I'm taking an hour lunch break during the day. I'm gonna grind these down, get them some fresh material uh, there to weld on. I'm gonna pound this guy out of here. This was used as a brace to keep the frame some sort of squeezing inwards when we did all this welding. So we're gonna knock that out. I'm gonna use this angle iron here uh, to weld on to these and they'll be in there when we're all said and done. So let's get started. Okay, so we got both of these welded up. Very happy with the welds, everything looks good. Diff will sit right nice in here, the housing, and uh, these will sit on the axle center line in our fixture. So it gives you an idea here of how high that axle sits. Uh, one note on this chassis, in Pennsylvania we have a scrub line law. Basically it's the uh, 
lowest the chassis can hang out from underneath the wheel edge. So with this chassis, the way that it's set up, it is set up to run a 17 inch or larger wheel. Um, just the way the rises are set up. So if you put a 15 inch drag wheel on this and you get a flat tire, you will sit on the frame. Um, but that shouldn't be an issue for us. We're gonna run uh, 19s front and rear, maybe a 20 on the rear, 19 on the front, sort of the Corvette setup. Um, but on the drag strip duty, we'll run a 17 inch wheel uh, with a drag radial. So not bad, but uh, looking good. So I'll get these in place and the housing should be delivered this afternoon. Okay, so we got center line and we're clamped up nice and good here. Center line and we're clamped up. So that will be where the rear will sit. All right guys, so it's 7.30 at night and I had a knock at the door and UPS brought me my rear housing. So what we got here is a 62 inch wheel mount surface to wheel mount surface, Ford nine inch rear end uh, housing. It's the quick performance fabricated version. You got their little logo there. Um, it's the fabricated housing, uh, which is a little bit stronger, a little bit lighter. But the big thing with this is it's got the Grand National end. So this is set up for a full floating uh, axle setup. So this whole axle, the big feature of this is, is this feature right here, the Grand National end. So we're gonna run full floating hubs out here. Uh, what that allows us to do is in hard cornering and stuff like that, we won't get axle bump back when you have um, our brake rope pad bump back. So what happens when you have the uh, regular standard axle, um, sometimes when you're in heavy braking, you can flex that axle and the uh, brake rotor will tend to flex into the pads. And when that happens, you push the pads back into the caliper and the brake pedal basically is spongy on that initial bite. So this gives you an advantage there. Plus it makes your axles a little bit stronger. They're not handling the, uh, you know, axial loads or the, uh, the weight of the car on it. Uh, they're only providing forward torque. So that's good. Um, there is a little bit of cleanup I need to do. So you need to grind off these extra welds because the, brackets that we made slide over the tube. So we need to make sure these are all cleaned up so that we can get them over. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the weld quality and stuff. It's all made together, but uh, it seems really nice. Everything looks uh, pretty good to go. So I've heard good things about quick performance. They're not super expensive or anything like that, but it seems like it's gonna get the job done. So I'm pretty happy. Well, I'll get to grinding here next and uh, we'll get the brackets slid on. Okay, so I couldn't wait, obviously. So I slid these over, they're just loosely placed and just sort of have this bracket propped up. That's a stud, it's not the right stud, but that's about the right offset. Just wanted to check how everything looks. And I gotta say, it's pretty good looking. Um, I need to adjust this bar, it's a little up kicked. We're on, if you look at it on the right hand side. So that needs to be raised a touch, but overall, I'm really happy with the way this thing looks. Um, you need to put that plate in here and everything will look good there. But yeah, that's pretty much the deal. Um, one thing with this, it's a centered pinion, not a centered housing. So just want to remember that if the housing looks like it's offset, it's because it is. It is all set to the left. I forget how much, but it's offset to the left because the pinion in a Ford nine inch is offset to the passenger side. But this is the three link. It's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with it. So we gotta get all the right hardware in there. I got a box full of shoulder bolts over there, but we'll worry about that once we get these tabs welded on. Okay, so enough with mock-up time. We got everything pulled out and we have it up on the bench now. So what I did notice is these little risers were scratching the uh, tube a little bit. So I just went ahead and put some a couple layers of tape around there. So when we spin this thing around, it will be protected and also protected the bearing uh, races for the rear end. So uh, we are gonna get ready to get these on, located and tacked up. 
So these are set up that this back edge here uh, will be zeroed out and on the same plane as the front face up here. So we will get the whole uh, tube uh, or housing leveled out and sort of locked in place there. Slide those uh, four links up and over and this get them intact in place. Um, overall, I think everything looks pretty good. Did some cleanup on the grinding, so that should be fine. And then all the measurements are from this bearing uh, race edge here uh, in. So just remember the pinion is offset on a nine inch. So that's why we're doing everything off the bearing races because we want it to be equal from the uh, wheel mounting center. So that'll be the best indexing point. So uh, first one here, uh, link on the outside will be nine inches to the outside surface. So we'll get that mocked up. Okay, so we got the brackets all stitched in place. We got some decent stitch welds uh, on them, holding them where they need to be. So I'm pretty happy with it. Everything is within probably a quarter degree of level or true to the uh, pinion face, or not the pinion face, but the housing face. So next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna burn these all the way complete. And then we are going to bend up these uh, brackets here and get them tacked on as well. So pretty pleased. Okay, so we got these all taped up uh, just to the outsides because that's gonna be plenty of weld. They look nice and pretty, all the pretty colors. Uh, so that's all done. Next up, we need to bend these plates and I need to do some rework on this uh, upper die plate. If you saw in the last video, it was giving me fits. So I need to get that fixed and then I'll bend those up. Uh, as far as additional modifications to this housing, so I'm thinking about running a diff cooler on this for track duty. Um, so what we're thinking about doing is I'm going to remove this uh, bleeder here or a vent tube, uh, and I'm gonna run a inner axle, inner axle seal uh, for this, and then run a dedicated oil cooler. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll end up putting a, a hole over here and I'll run a uh, coupling, uh, weld a coupling in here, and then we'll weld a return coupling up here somewhere, uh, and we'll circulate the oil in this to a cooler uh, slash heater, which I'll explain later. So um, yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. Next thing, we'll uh, get these welded on. I lied, instead of bending, we are going to install some couplings. So. I need to install a diff cooler on this truck because I plan on doing some track duty with it and I want it to maintain a good diff temperature uh, and I can use, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go air cooled or water cooled yet and I'll explain the reasons why later but basically if I go water cooled, I can actually use the radiator water as a diff heater and get this up to temperature quicker uh, for drag racing. So uh, at temperature, there's a lot less friction horsepower losses on uh, the gear meshing surfaces, so you can pick up some ET by running warm fluid in your diff. So, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna drill some holes. We're gonna install a connection up here. This is gonna be the return down here. We're gonna put the pickup. So, uh, I went down and got a hole saw, one inch hole saw, which is just a touch bigger than what I need, but they don't have a 900 thousandths hole saw. So this will do the trick. There'll be a little bit of clearance, but that'll be fine. Uh, let's get popping holes in this.
Okay, so we got these welded in. I got the half inch MPT. I got a 45 AN on here, which is gonna go to a dash eight. So this is just, just dash eight hose ends for mock-up. And then I got down here a 90. So this is gonna kick the tubing uh, and the uh, hose rather out here. Uh, this will sort of kick it up, give it a little bit of slack. This one here will come up this way with a little bit of slack and we'll put a diff cooler back on this bar that will keep everything nice and out of the way and we'll make sure that we route it in such a manner that it's up and out of the way of the pan hard bar. So uh, that should work good. Uh, I think that will give us plenty of flow. Dash eight should be plenty. Uh, and then we'll also need to put an inline pump uh, because that gear oil is gonna be nice and thick. So we're gonna get a 12 volt gear pump mounted down low. And then that way you have enough uh, positive head pressure on the pump to prime it and it'll pump up and then through the cooler and back into the diff. So should work out pretty good. I'm happy with it. Okay, so it's the next day, lunch break over quarantine time. I got five and three quarters uh, inch uh, away from the edge that I need to trace out on that. And I got this uh, die plate redone, put some washers in it, really clamped it down. Hopefully it doesn't move anywhere. Gonna trace these out, get them bent up. Okay, so this one turned out real nice. I got it nice and square. Uh, fitment looks good. I can get it all tight up in there. So that one will need tacked up. This one I over bent just a scooch. You can see it there. So I'll probably pull it out and put it in the vise. And I also noticed that my bend radius is too tight and I cracked the outside edges. So what I'm going to have to do is reinforce that somehow, probably do uh, some weld repair on that crack. Um, that being said, it is not a very highly stressed region. The highly stressed region is up in here, so I'm not terribly concerned about it. So I'll make that repair, bend it back out, uh, overshot that by about a quarter of a pump and uh, get that tweaked and then we'll wet them up. Okay guys, so next day, I just fired off a plasma cutter, didn't show you guys because you've seen enough of it, but cut out these links. These are the upper links, the upper tabs, uh, 3 16 inch plate, and then we have this little back piece here that's like a brace. So what this is gonna do, we're gonna mount the short one on here, about one inch from that center line. This one is going to be there. And this one, as you can see, is sort of like an offset taper that's gonna sit right in like this, and then I'll brace everything up. So we're gonna go ahead, get this whole thing cleaned up with uh, some Scotch-Brite and uh, get them tacked in place. Okay, so we got that all welded up. Pretty happy with the way it turned out. Should be nice and solid. Um, the next thing we need to do, and we're all done then, well, we need to put in some sleeves in here. So this uh, is set up to take a little sleeve, and then there's gonna be a stud that sticks out yay far, and then the sway bar is going to run inboard here, um, which we will do in the next episode. But we're gonna do the sleeves now and get this diff all finished up complete and we'll put it on the car, truck. Okay, so off camera, I got the sleeves just tigged in there. 
on both sides here. So these are gonna be the bushings or the sleeves for the uh, the sway bars. The, the, there'll be sway bar little pins that pop out this way and then the sway bar will be mounted in between sort of the wheel arches there and reach back and, and drive off those pins. So now let's get this thing mounted up in the truck. All right guys, so the three link is in, the rear is in. I'm super happy with the way this looks. Very beefy. I think that everything here is gonna hold up great. So I went ahead and sort of got it plumbed in and uh, sort of leveled out. So I got about half a degree of pinion angle in it right now. The motor's gonna be set about one degree, so we're gonna adjust that later. All this is just mock-up purposes right now. Of course, everything will be final setup, but Look at it, it's pretty. Uh, nothing binds, everything floats nice and pretty. So that noise you hear over there is it sliding on the uh, stand, but super happy. If you look, so let me watch this. We're at 89.7 degrees or of pinion angle. And if I raise it all the way up to the max, we gain about, three tenths of a degree, so that's about perfect. So, yeah, I'm really happy with this. The geometry and everything like that should be perfect for like a pro touring setup. And if we ever need to go to a drag racing setup, we can change the uh, anti-squat a little bit. We got tons of adjustment on this, but hey, it's all wrapped up, ready to go. So that's gonna be it for this episode. I hope you guys like what we got going on here. Next episode, we're gonna start working on the sway bar setup for this rear suspension and we're gonna get that all installed back here and hooked up to these uh, sleeved sections here. But yeah, check it out. We got a diff housing, uh, four nine inch in the back of this truck and uh, chassis coming along great. So cruising along on schedule. Uh, until next time guys, like and subscribe. Try sharing it with your friends. Uh, I always appreciate it, so you got a diff.